Now about yesterday's episode. I don't know what happened. I really don't know what happened. Everything was going fine. I uploaded it as I usually do. YouTube notified me it was 100% uploaded. And then it started processing. Normally when it starts processing, it starts at zero and works its way up. And it usually only takes about, oh, 10 minutes for a video that long. Well, it stayed at zero for about 45 minutes or more. I knew there was a problem. There was a glitch somewhere. I don't know if it was a glitch in my upload or a glitch at YouTube. Anyway, I deleted everything, re-uploaded, and, well, we got it. But it was almost two hours late. I hope this doesn't happen too often. Okay. At the end of yesterday's episode, we had thinned out the Steinle Res to 20% with the Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. And it worked out really well with the airbrush. I don't know what else I can say. You, you, I mean, you can't uh, argue with success, right? And I think I said something to the effect of, uh, we'll take all these little parts that we sprayed here, stick on the macro lens, and have a nice close look. So let's put on the macro lens and have a nice close look. Now I'm noticing here where I was using little pieces of masking tape to uh, hold the edges down. I got pretty close to those parts. I don't know if... I guess we'll know when we nip that part off if, uh, you know, the masking tape covered it up and it didn't get sprayed on. Yeah, I should have been more careful, I guess. Now, that one didn't make a popping sound. Makes me wonder if I went through. Guess we'll soon know. Yep. You'll notice that the part does not stay in place when I nip the last little connection. Well, that's because we removed the backing from both sides so that we could spray in from both sides. Normally, I have to peel them off. Oh, I could have gone a little bit closer on that one, I believe. Okay, let's get those on the rotator and have a close look. Now, I'm noticing right there we've got a little tiny piece of dust that has been painted onto the onto the part. 
Now I'm just going to try and hold it down here with this stiff bristle to brush here. In such a way that I can maybe grab hold of it with a tweezer. Yeah. Well, and, and I think I just more or less broke broke it off. It's kind of well, you know what? If we if we need a microscope to to see this, nobody's going to notice. Now, when we look at them through the macro lens, yes, we can see where the tabs were nipped off or cut off. But you know, normally you cannot see that. Um, yeah, I don't think we need to worry about that. I don't think I need to try and need to worry about touching those up. Um, yeah, okay, I think we've looked at these about as good as we can. Let's move on. Now I should mention here, you obviously noticed that you could see the photo etch when you were looking at them from underneath. But these little items are going to be standing straight up and we're going to be looking more or less down on them. Either straight down or maybe at an angle, but I was sort of down. We will never be looking up into the bottom of them where you can see the photo etch. So I wasn't too worried about it. I knew that that was going to show, but it wasn't going to be a big deal. Ladder number one. Number two. Number three. And number four. Now these pair of veins one of the viewers sent me a uh, a link to I think it was the USS Texas or Texan I can't remember which one um, I will know when I go back to the computer but I want to show you what one of these things looked like at least on that ship and it and it does look very much like these. Maybe I could have given this just a little bit more. You notice right there, it's, uh, it's a little bit faint, but that's okay. Okay, a bit of time has passed here now, and I've been sort of thinking about, uh, I guess I've been sort of thinking about why am I not happy with the way things have been going with my spraying lately. Well, I think it's probably because I've tried, I've got away from what I found actually worked when we're when we were doing the Bismarck. Now, when we were doing the Bismarck, I found that if I took the th the piece and cut it off of the photo etch sheet. Now, I'm talking about the photo etch pieces right now, and and just laid them on masking tape that was, you know, sticky side up, as you can see here. Spray it properly. Oh, one, one nice thing about when I do it like this, uh, I can see by the area around on the masking tape when the paint is, you know, getting saturated. Whereas when you're spraying the part while it's still stuck onto the photo etch sheet, you're, sp you're spraying through it, past it, and it's it's harder to tell when you've got enough on. In other words, if, if this area around here is completely covered, you know that the part has to be. And I found that actually quite easy. Now, now what is bad about it is you have to later take it off carefully, turn it, turn it over, and do the other side. Now, this is stuck on there pretty good. Seems to me I used the frog tape, this, this sticky side up. This is, this is a different kind. Let's see if I can get that off without removing the paint. Okay, so the idea would be you would you would turn it over. Oh, another thing I was finding that if you if you remember when when we did the Bismarck, you could take a piece like this, and if you were careful, <clears throat> excuse me, you could actually see if I can, if I can do it here. 
I know that I'm, I'm zoomed away back here and you're not really seeing what I'm doing, but you could actually stand it up. Like that. Very carefully here. Don't want to buckle anything. Okay, now you notice that? And and for the most part, it, it would stay there when you sprayed it. Um, that kind of worked too. Not, not too well, because if you remember when it was on the rotator and the thing would be turning around, it would be wobbling this way and then that way and then this way and then that way. But it did actually work. Anyway, I probably will not be spraying photo edge parts while they're still stuck on the sheet. That's my preference. Other people, it might work just fine for them. Well, it's like I've said before, there's no real right or wrong way to do this. Well, I suppose to extremes there is, but there's, there's no right or wrong way to do this hobby. It's just, it's just whatever happens to work for you. Um, now, there's one more thing I want to do here. Um, it's been suggested by more than one per people, person, <laughs> um, put in a brand new number 11 blade and see if you can cut all the way around the edge here and then peel off the excess that isn't supposed to be there. Um, it seems to me I tried something like this and it didn't work, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna swallow my pride here and stop being stubborn and I'm gonna put in a brand new blade and give it a try. You know, I'm open to new ideas. Now, as long as I'm belly aching here, in all likelihood, this will be the last time I leave little pieces attached to the sprue as well for the very same reason when the little piece is laying down on the on the masking tape it's much easier for me to paint and see when I've got enough paint on anyway now here's a number 11 blade that I just came across for whatever reason I reshaped and uh, sharpened it uh, it is probably extremely sharp on the tip this is the one that I've been using recently. It, it is honed down, it is extremely sharp, but it doesn't have that tip on it like a, like a brand new one does. Um, I do want to hang on to these. Um, this uh, thing here originally had 15 blades in it, as best I remember. And uh, I bought it from Cellar Dweller a few years ago. It's Kind of, kind of nostalgic about that because it sort of brings back better, better days, memories of better days. Um, anyway, we'll get it out here. Uh, normally, what you would do is you would you would take your dulled blade and you'd stick it in this slot. There's actually several in there, probably about at least eight or nine. Um, okay. a little bit of grease on that that I could carefully rub off with a little bit of isopropyl and that way if it won't be sticky but that, that, that blade looks really really good to me okay this is the one that we were messing around with yesterday when we were trying to pry the sides down now I might have to find a different way of supporting this it's Yeah, it's coming loose. Maybe blue tack.
I can see this is not going to work. What's happening is in the, the blade, instead of cutting, it's, it's catching on it. It's catching on it. Well, in theory, it should have worked, right? Okay. Well, that's, that's too bad. Okay. So what I'm going to have to do, I guess, I, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm almost at the point where I want to take and, and pull all of this liquid mask out of all of these and just, and just start all over again and, and do it the way I would have done it had I not had the liquid mask, which was, you know, um, paint them all gray and then with a brush carefully just try and do the inside. Um, okay. Now I'd like to point out that this one here is the, was the largest life raft. The rest were all little ones. So you might say the degree of difficulty would be a lot greater, at least for me. Now, I was just thinking here, as long as I'm going to be spraying everything with a darker 77, um, you know, I should really be taking that blade off and saving it. Um, anyway, I may as well repaint these photo etch pieces. Uh, <clears throat> the reason I'm doing, it, doing this is so that when I spray at an angle, the uh, spray does not start flapping this this piece of uh, th this is the sticky side anyway I think you know what I'm talking about here now if I'm smart I will not I will just set those on there and more or less let their own weight adhere them to the uh, to the de to the masking tape because if I uh, poke them down too hard, they're too hard to, too easily bent when I try to get them up again. And they don't have to be perfectly straight. It's just that if I can keep them all at the same angle, then I can sort of makes it a little easier to spray. I don't have to keep adjusting the the brush back and forth. Okay, now just, just a little bit here. Don't poke them down too hard. They're not coming off. Okay. Now, I was about to thin out this 77 that I have. You see the T on there. That means that I've thinned it out already. Unfortunately, I don't know to what degree I thinned it out, but I, I'm assuming probably, you know, probably uh, 30%. I don't know. Uh, I, look, I just opened it up and looked down in there a moment ago, and it, it looks fairly watery. But I think I will thin it out just a little bit more. I'm just going to sort of eyeball it, see how it looks. And then I realized, well, you know, we've got this one right here that we uh, made a mess of. I made a mess of. And I'm thinking that what I should maybe do is just take this out of here because I'm going to have to repaint re the bottom anyway. And uh, I, th I think I'm just going to take this out. I'm probably going to have to put on my magnification hood here because this doesn't seem to want to be coming very good. This is actually the first time that I've tried to take a whole lot out all at once. Oh, there's, it's now starting to come. Yeah. Let's see if I can grab hold of it and get it to go. Well, it kind of did. 
Yeah. I didn't want to do this because I didn't want to be getting grease from my fingers all over everything, but this actually works the best, obviously. All right. I'll, uh, I'll just put on my uh, extra strong glasses and I'll look at that and make sure there's no residue along the sides that it's going to affect it. I don't think there is. I think we got most of it. Okay, so this one here, I'm obviously going to have to take a little brush and paint the entire bottom with the deck tan again. Okay, well, it was an experiment, you know. It, you know, it, it could have worked, you know. Now, I don't want to make it too thin. Okay, let's mix that up and we'll just keep our fingers crossed. I do have more of this 77, so if, if this isn't going to work out, then, you know, we can, I guess you might say, do it right. Well, I realize that it's only about 1 o'clock here this afternoon in Winnipeg, and I probably could spray everything, and I could probably get the final edit done and uh, upload it to YouTube and so on, but I'm, after what happened yesterday, um, in other words, uh, YouTube was having a tr trouble processing my, my upload, I want to have lots of time just in case there's a problem again. Um, so I'm going to cut this episode off, and we're going to have to uh, do our spraying in tomorrow's episode. Uh, yeah, I, and, oh, I know that when I, when I do spray them, little items like this, we're going to be, you're going to be so far back, like right now, you're, you're not going to really be able to see them getting painted, but we will look at, we will look at them really close up later with the macro lens. So, uh, anyway, I'm starting to uh, think out loud here. Um, thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>